Dear learners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and today we will be talking about Psychology, Understanding Self and Others, Part 1. Introduction to Psychology Whenever the word psychology comes to our mind, certain questions appear. For example, Moods Why do people have different moods? Sometimes they are happy, the other times they are sad. Sometimes they are anxious, other times they may be confused. Sometimes they are angry and so on. People have different ability. Ability to learn and memorize poems, stories and events. Some may be good at mathematics, whereas others are good at social sciences. People have different personalities. The powerful effect of leaders on behaviors of followers. What is the charisma in these leaders that leads the followers to follow them? Behavior in groups. Conflict. Cooperation. Which means, when they are working in groups, how do they cooperate? Or why does conflict happen? Depression. Hyper anxiety. People may suffer from stressful events in their lives. All of us remain curious to know about the causes of these happenings and try to make sense in our own ways. Our understanding is often based on beliefs and personal experiences which may not be true. The knowledge gathered in this way cannot be used to formulate theories or to solve problems faced by people in their lives. We need dependable and relatively accurate understanding of principles describing the working of human mind and behavior. Psychology is the subject that provides insight into various aspects of human behavior. What are the objectives of today's program? At the end of this program, you will be able to explain the need for the study of psychology and nature of psychology. Describe what psychologists do. State briefly the development of psychology as a discipline. Need for the study of psychology. That is, why do we study psychology? Psychology promises to help us in understanding how various mental functions operate and how people behave in different conditions. Teaching learning problems in schools. Why children have certain behavioral problems in schools. Socializing children at home. Motivating people in organizations. And helping people to solve their emotional problems in personal lives. How to adapt to the environment. How to live a purposeful and an effective life. Selection of people for various jobs. Assessing abilities and aptitudes of people. Providing training for developing skills. Setting goals and motivating people to achieve them. And improving the style of life for better health are some of the very popular applications of psychology. Which means psychology covers the whole of a human's life. A proper study and understanding of psychology can help us understand ourselves and others better and enhance the quality of life. How human beings receive information from environment and perceive objects. How people learn and remember experiences. How do people think, reason and solve problems. Which means that psychology is trying to look at how the mind works. It also tries to know that how do people differ in various psychological characteristics? For example, intelligence, personality and interest. How do people cope with various problems in life? If we look at all aspects, we would come to know that psychology covers all the aspects of a human's life. Any observable action is an outcome of a coordination of brain, mind 
and behavior. Brain has a physical structure whereas mind is considered a functional correlate of brain. Psychology tries to understand the laws and principles characterizing the linkages across them in a scientific manner. That is why psychology is known as the scientific study of human mind and behavior. Understanding of psychological phenomena in modern sense started only during the 19th century. It was influenced by the developments in disciplines of philosophy as well as natural sciences, which means that it is a new subject only. Psychology tries to answer the various questions regarding human behavior by looking at how the mind works in helping the individual adapt to his or her environment. Now, what psychologists do? Many of us carry the impression that psychologists can read the face of a person and tell one's mental makeup, they may cure people suffering from mental abnormalities, can guess what is one's future and can change one's mind instantaneously like a magician. If you ever go and tell people that you are a psychology student, they will always ask the first question that can you read my face, which is as if you are a magician. But there is no magic in the hands of psychologists. This is the truth. A psychologist uses certain procedures and tools to collect information and tries to draw inferences and conclusions about the probable causes of behavior. And this is done in a scientific manner. Psychologists try to understand human behavior by using various tools and techniques. We will learn about them in the future. But how do psychologists do all this? This is one question that comes to our mind that is if they are not magicians, how do they look inside the mind? How can they predict behavior? Psychologists share twin goals, which is understanding and explaining complexities of behavior. And the second is contributing to the improvement of the quality of human life. That is, they are involved in two kinds of activities. One is, which is understanding and explaining why a particular person is behaving in such a such manner. And the second goal is based on the understanding how a psychologist can help in the improvement of a person's life. First of all, we will talk about the psychologists that are dealing with the first goal. They are called academic psychologists. The academic psychologists pursuing basic research are interested in the first goal. They try to test hypotheses about the diverse aspects of behavior and mental processes. They develop principles, laws and theories using various methods such as observation and experimentation. They may try to collect data and based on the analysis of that data, they try to make theories about human behavior. The second goal is fulfilled by applied psychologists, which is based on the understanding of behavior, how to implement that knowledge in order to have a successful life. They try to use psychological knowledge in solving various human problems. You might have heard about a counsellor, a school psychologist or a clinical psychologist. They are engaged in activities like counselling, therapy, personal selection, career guidance, consultancy in organisational behaviour, consumer surveys and 
psychological assessment and training in various skills. Let us explain this with the example of a football player. A player on the field practiced kicking a lot for the goal. But when he had a chance to kick the game, winning the field goal, he choked. Which means despite of the practice which he was doing, he could not make a goal. The player did not know why he could not kick the field goal after he practiced so many times. So what do people do in such cases? He went to a sports psychologist to find out why did this happen. This was one example for sports. There are others. For example, the student seeking help from a counsellor. That is, people are becoming very aware and they are going to professionals for finding out the solutions to their various behaviour problems. Now, let us understand that how psychology emerged as a discipline, which is development of psychology as a discipline. The Indian thinkers had developed elaborate theories about consciousness, self, mind activities since Vedic and Upanishadic period, which means that psychology has its existence in Indian literature through ages. The Indian thought systems like Vedanta, Samakhya, Yoga, Buddhism, Jainism, Sufism have generated voluminous literature relevant to psychological processes. In the Western world, psychology took the shape of a scientific discipline towards the end of 19th century. It is generally held that William Wundt established the first psychological laboratory at Leipzig University in Germany in 1879. However, the study of psychology as a discipline was organized around certain schools of thoughts, which means that in order to understand human behavior, the various psychologists were trying to understand it from their own perspective and everyone had its own school of thoughts, which is everyone had its own theories of understanding human behavior. The first school of thought is known as structuralism. Structuralism was developed by Edward Titchener. It focused on the study of consciousness and its components, that is, sensation, images and effects. Let us understand how. Consider for example the perception of a flower which means that how a layman perceives a flower. Structuralist would analyze this perception in terms of its constituent colors, geometric forms, size, relations and so on. For example, if we look at the image of a flower from a structuralist point of view, the structuralist would try to understand the flower in terms of its constituent parts. For example, the leaf, the stem or the petals. In terms of human mind as well, the structuralist would sort to deconstruct the mind into its elementary components. They were also interested in how those elementary components work together to create the mind. For example, if these are the different components of the brain, then the structuralist would deconstruct these different components and would try to understand that how together they work. Let us come to the next school of thought which is known as functionalism. It was developed by William James and focused on consciousness, memory, learning and emotions as related to 
survival, growth and adaptation of living beings or the process of mind. We can say that functionalism was not interested in the various parts of the mind or in the structure of the mind. Rather, it was interested in how the mind work, which is the process of mind. Let us come to the next school of thought, which is known as behaviorism. And it was developed by J.B. Watson and focused on the objective study of observable behavior, which means that whatever behavior can be seen with open eyes, how it can be interpreted to understand the behavior of a human being. The next school of thought is known as Gestalt and it was developed by Wolfgang Kohler, Kurt Kafka and their mentor Max Verdheimer. The main aim of this school was to understand human behavior as a whole. This school focused on a holistic view and consciousness. Perception was the main area of the study of the school. Let us take one example of the Keniza Triangle, which is in front of you. Now, if we look at this Keniza Triangle, we perceive that there are two triangles and three circles. But this is actually not true because the picture is not complete. So, the Gestalt school of thought focused on the behavior of individual that whatever we perceive, we try to perceive as a whole. We try to fill in the gaps. We will understand about these schools in detail in future. Psychoanalysis. It is one of the very famous schools of thoughts of psychology. It was developed by Sigmund Freud and it gave importance to the unconscious processes, conflicts and disorders. This is Freud image of mind, which means that through this image, Freud tried to explain that our mind consists of three parts. First is the conscious part, the second is the subconscious part and the third is the unconscious part. According to Freud, the 80% of the mind is unconscious and whatever we do, it is because of those unconscious desires. Unconscious means we are not aware of those desires consciously and whatever we do is related to those unconscious desires in mind. These were certain schools of thoughts. Of psychology. The era of schools provided great opportunity for the diversification of psychology. However, it was felt that none of them could explain psychological processes in totality. So, the next school of thought which came is known as cognitive psychology. The recent movements include emphasis on information theory and computational models which characterized cognitive revolution. The neural processes and role of cultural processes in shaping psychological functions are now being studied vigorously. Which means that in order to understand human behavior, the neural processes which is what goes on in the mind as well as how the cultural influences an individual is now being studied. That is, we study the environment as well as the processes of the brain in order to understand the human behavior. In modern India, psychology started at Calcutta University in 1916. Dr. Anand Sen Gupta was the first head of the department. Shri Girendra Shekhar Bose succeeded Dr. Sen Gupta. The Indian Psychological Association was founded in 1924 and Indian Journal of Psychology was started in 1925. The Lumbini Park Mental Hospital at Calcutta was founded in 1940.
40. With this, I end up for today's discussion. Thank you.